uh, in the Mojave Desert in California, there are nine solar power plants that generated, up until not long ago, generated most of the solar power on Earth in the world. Um, they were built in the 80s, and they have been quietly, very quietly, generating solar electricity since then, and they feed into the grid uh, the equivalent of half of the residential electricity needs in the city of San Francisco. Um, let me talk about some of the mythology out there. One, solar power is equal to photovoltaic panels on a rooftop. That's the first thing that we think of when we think solar. The reality is that most of the solar power that's ever been generated has come from large scale, utility scale solar power, uh, not rooftop. Uh, the reality is that most of this solar power has come from thermal, uh, concentrating solar power, not, uh, which use mirrors. And we started out with mirrors, not unlike what you would buy at Home Depot, a little different, but not, not very, um, not uh, PV. So in fact, you can harness both the heat and the photons in, the, in, in, in solar power. A single solar concentrating solar power plant that's being built right now in the Mojave Desert is going to generate, when it opens, more solar power than all the solar panels installed in the United States last year. Just this one single power plant, which gives you an indication of the magnitude of what CSP can provide out in the desert. And uh, if some of you did not know, this is, uh, they're gonna use uh, a technology called solar power tower. Now it sounds like Lord of the Rings, um, and in fact, you have these solar, uh, these towers surrounded by mirrors, and they're called heliostats. And heliostats, uh, s uh, basically follow the sun. That's what it means in Greek. Follow the sun and they point the sunlight on top of that tower that you see and that creates some uh, steam which runs a turbine which generates electricity. Now most of our electricity comes that way, steam that runs a turbine. The only difference is that we use the sun to generate that steam. And these power plants actually are in Spain, in southern Spain. Uh, and that technology, by the way, was invented in California, right here in the late 70s and early 80s. Uh, but most of the companies that are now developing it are European, especially Spanish. Um, another myth, solar is too expensive. Actually, the, when I took the uh, the taxi ride to the airport a couple of days ago, or was it yesterday? Um, the, the, the driver was like, oh, you're in solar. Isn't solar too expensive? And I'm like, okay, you should come see my talk. Um, the reality is that these power plants that I just mentioned have generated uh, for 20 plus years uh, electricity at about nine to 12 cents per kilowatt hour. Now, just to give you an indication, in America, on average, we pay 10 cents. So keep that in mind as I throw numbers at you uh, for the rest of the presentation. 10 cents is what's called grid parity. Uh, photovoltaics, so thermal and then photovoltaics, uh, also generate power at nine to 20 cents. So nine cents we're pushing into grid parity. Uh, and of course, if you see the two graphs, you see where solar is headed, down, 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 and I'll talk more about that. 
uh, and where our electricity prices are headed up, up, up. Um, recently, actually a couple of months ago, a uh, power plant that uses concentrating photovoltaics, a CPV, opened in uh, California, uh, one megawatt plant, so relatively small, that generates power at a cost of 8.5 cents per kilowatt hour. So already it's pushing below grid parity. This runs actually most of the power now at a college in California. And uh, they're gonna get their money back in five years. So the payback is five years. And after that, of course, they're gonna get pretty much power for free for the rest of their existence. But wait, there's more. CPV costs are going down about 20% per year. If you follow this curve, in five years, CPV will cost under three cents per kilowatt hour. Three cents. Now, imagine that it takes 10 years, not five. It means that in 10 years, if we follow this curve, solar will be cheaper, not just than uh, nuclear, not just, than, will be cheaper than coal without subsidies. Hmm. The reality is that look at the prices that Hawaiians, anyone from Hawaii? Hawaii pays some of the most expensive power in America, 30 plus cents per kilowatt hour. And look at the prices in each island, 34 cents, 32 cents. And that's because they're diesel powered. And diesel is expensive for electricity. So today, solar power is 50 plus percent cheaper than what Hawaii gets from diesel. Now, isn't it a shame that sunny islands in the Pacific are paying to import diesel when they could be using the sun, which is, by the way, cheaper? Hmm, isn't that interesting? And once you pay off the mortgage, from the solar plant, the cost to maintain and clean and whatnot the solar plant is less than one cent. One cent forever. The reality is that solar costs have gone down 90% over the last 30 years. And they will go down an additional 80 to 90% over the next 10 years. So in fact, the technology curve and the cost curve is actually going faster because over the last few years, we abandoned solar for a couple of decades. And over the last few years, we've been investing again and we've been deploying it. So in fact, it's getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. So in 10 years, by 2020, solar will go down another 80 to 90 percent. Um, the reality is that two billion people around the world are not even grid connected. And what does grid parity mean if you're not grid connected? And most of these people pay for kerosene or diesel up to two dollars a kilowatt hour. They pay 20 times what we pay in America. And Here's the adoption of solar power in Bangladesh. Bangladesh has more than a quarter million homes wired to solar. The poorest people in one of the poorest countries in the world are adopting solar, as you see. Hmm, so maybe solar is not that expensive after all. What do you think? But wait, there's more. Solar costs are going down so fast that in five years, it'll be cheaper than what you pay today in two thirds of the United States. So it'll be at grid parity or below in two thirds of America in five years. Another myth, 
PV, solar, or CSP is new, and it's not ready for prime time. And in fact, the first commercial solar plant was opened in 1912. 1912, and this is a picture of that solar plant. See the parabolic troughs? What they do is they focus the sunlight. Now in this case, here's what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna give a copy of my book, not this one, but I'll mail you one, to whoever can tell me um, where this power plant was located. So in fact, this was an American entrepreneur, his name was Frank Schumann, who was funded by the British, and he opened this first solar power plant in Egypt. And the purpose was to pump Nile River water to irrigate the cotton fields. Now, at that time, Egypt was the number one cotton producer in the world. Uh, so when you hear Egyptian cotton, now you know. Now, so it's been out there for almost 100 years. Now check out the new technology. Do you see a difference between these two? It's 80 year difference. They use pretty much the same parabolic trough. Of course, we've made a lot of progress. Uh, but the point I'm saying is that this more or less similar technology has been around for a long time. And this is exactly the technology that's used in these power plants in the Mojave Desert. Parabolic trough, concentrating solar power, which have fed consistently for more than two decades power to the California grid. And, and here's a kicker. Here's a myth. Solar power can only be used during the day. Now you would think that's the case. The sun only shines during the day, right? Well, here's the reality. The reality is that there's a power plant in Spain called Andasol that has seven and a half hours of battery. So energy storage of seven and a half hours, which means they can generate solar power well into, well past midnight. Hmm. What they use is thermal power. Now this is not electricity storage, this is thermal. They store the heat and they use something called molten salt, um, which is 60% potassium nitrate, which as you know is what they use for fertilizers. And what they used to use before refrigeration to cure meat. So you could eat the stuff. You may not want to, but you could. It's totally environmentally safe, and it's very cheap. It's under $100 in capital cost per kilowatt hour. Electricity storage costs anywhere from 1,000 to 3,000. So this is 90% plus cheaper than storing electricity. And there is a power plant being built right now in Spain called Gemma Solar that will have 15 hours of storage, which means that Spain is going to have a 24 seven solar power plant. Storage is available today and it has been, this is yet another technology that we invented uh, right here in America in the 80s. And of course it's being used around the world. So let me recap this part. Solar is cost competitive, uses mirrors as well as PV. It's been commercial since 1912, uh, feeds uh, a lot of power to the grid, and can deliver 24 seven electricity with cheap and environmentally safe batteries. As soon as I learned all these things, I said, I, there, there's an opportunity here. There's gotta be an opportunity here.